Hi everybody, welcome to 36 Days of Type with Type Arthur. My name is Thomas Daam, I'm the host for today and organizer of this hour with Arthur. And uh, I run a design conference blog from e events around the world and next to my graphic design practice. Like a week ago, I emailed Arthur with the question, I'm so impressed with, with your work that you did for uh, 36 days of type. Can we do a small event that you share your story and your journey because it, it looks amazing and I'm really impressed about it. And I would like to learn more from you on why, why you made certain decisions. Why does, does it look like this? How did you come up with the idea? All that kind of stuff. I really want to know the nitty gritty of the project. And then Arthur said, uh, yeah. I'm open for that, so let's do that. And it's not that I didn't know Arthur before because we run a workshops together with, your, with Jeroen on creating your own variable fonts. That was already a connection. And now I'm really glad that we are here together with this nice group of people that are interested in, in illustration, in letters, in, in everything that's happening with typefaces and characters and letter forms. So yeah, Arthur, I want to ask you to give your presentation. And after the presentation, there is option for Q&A and I'm recording the session, but the Q&A session we will not publish because if you want to ask your question uh, live, then you, you can just raise your hand and uh, maybe you don't want to be recorded. So um, we don't publish that. So that's a note for later. And for now, I would say, Arthur, the stage is yours. Yeah, so I'll take the floor. All right. Well, I'm uh, Arthur Randers Fulmer, and I run, uh, well, I have my own design practice, but I also run a type foundry called Typerture. And in Typerture, it's the mix of type, Arthur, and adventure. And I am quite interested in letter forms and illustrative types. Normally, I make uh, typefaces out of them, but it all started out a bit simpler because then I didn't really know how to make a type. So it all started usually with illustration, and that's also where this project starts. So I will talk a bit about, well, the project I did for the 36 days of type, which isn't done yet, but um, well, we can uh, sort of uh, catch up. So this is a project which I've been running for quite a while, and it always has sort of lingered in the back of my mind that, oh, I should continue with it, I should do something with it, and then you go back to it and improve it. And this time I thought, like, no, let's just do the final improvements and get it out there, because I have so much things on my shelf, which I want to publish, but always wait for the right moment. Sometimes you have to say the right moment. Uh, well, it, it takes you. So how did I actually start with this project? Um, if you don't know the 36 days of type, it's you um, post a letter every day and a number for 36 days. And at the end, you have an entire alphabet and a numeral range. Well. People take different concepts or make an overarching concept or just tie in for one or two days. Um, but for me, I went the whole way and also with an overarching concept and also a concept above the concept. So I've been working on this project for a while, ever since I became a godfather. And of course, when kids grow older and you are starting to look for books for them, you find out that there's these A to Z books, how you learn the uh, things in the world, like objects or the alphabet, can be the Latin alphabet, but any alphabet. It's in all these, uh, yeah, it's also, it's also happy. Um, these letters, uh, not the letters below, but the animals, they're from my animal typeface called Fable. Um, I made them here <laughs> in color. Arthur, your presentation doesn't work. Oh, I will. Is it now working? Mm. Can you see the next page? No. OK, well, uh, let me just uh, redo it, share my screen again. Uh, can you see it now? Yeah. OK, 
yeah, sorry, that's a PDF. Um, so you can see here, the letters are quite uh, uh, happy and you have some, uh, well, something below it with the letter stands for something. And yeah, I found, why is this all so happy? Why are we learning all these things that, oh, all is happy, joy, joy. But in the end, actually, for instance, with these animals, uh, the world is more like this. Uh, can you see this one with the uh, headlines from the newspapers? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay, I won't ask again. I just have to be sure. So you can see um, this is actually what we as grown ups usually know like uh, um, animals are going extinct here in the, I'm from the Netherlands, we're the masters of it. I mean, the dead as a dodo, uh, it, it came from us. Um, so things are being endangered, things are being, uh, pollution is everywhere. And you can ask like, oh, who's fault is this? Well, it's more like, why are we showcasing this world as a perfect thing? Well, actually, you could perhaps learn a bit if you sometimes add in this, this tiny hook, if you make it a small imperfection that, for instance, you also have the A is for Apple, that the Apple isn't always uh, like have a smiling face or something on it. It's, it, it, it should have should be more interesting. So I was thinking, how could we do something like this? How could we create an, uh, perhaps one of these alphabet books, which learns something for the child and perhaps the parent uh, takes into account the current state of the world, um, things which are happening and doesn't turn a blind eye because that happens enough already in real society. Um, but you learn that later, um, like you don't have to really force them that, that everything is bad, but still, I think it's good that it could be a bit wider and it could be useful and it could be, uh, help you learn things. So as you can see here, well, this is a bit, uh, the state of our current world. We have fire oils, a bit fewer nuclear, uh, tests, but still, hey, in Algeria, they still have, uh, fallout so uh, yeah not always well so what i started with was finding out what do i want to tell and how could i relate this to one of those a to z books so for instance uh, one of my youth uh, memories of a real disaster which really hit me as a kid was the oil spill of the exxon valdez which was in alaska and for this, I started to sort of gather information. Okay, if I want the letter E to be for Exxon Valdez, for like an event in which bad things happened, I'll have to gather things like, what was it? What was the event? What was the kind of damage? What was the, where was it? Uh, what kind of ecosystem? Um, what kind of creatures lived there? Uh, when was it? and perhaps a connection to something else. And actually also what happened now? Well, here you can see a sort of a list of which I made for most of my letters. And we can see it's in a gulf somewhere, Alaska. There's a lot of sea uh, creatures and otters and other animals living there. Um, it's of course in the end of the eighties and especially the current state is interesting, like they say the cleanup is complete, but the health and ecological um, effects are disputed. Uh, you can probably understand but disputed by whom, so it's all legal mumbo jumbo. Uh, then also, like there's been paid money uh, to uh, yeah, pay for the damages. And uh, interesting was to learn that the tanker which spilled and was damaged actually kept on, um, yeah, kept in service till 2012 under a different name, which was interesting because after the disaster, they just gave the different name. So the ship wasn't connected anymore with the disaster. So then everything is fine, right? So I gathered information and I gathered information from the entire A to Z. Um, scarily, it was far too easy to find a disaster for every letter of the alphabet. Usually people are breaking their minds. What can I use for the X or the Q or uh, something else? But scarily, it was 
extremely easy and I didn't use even the worst ones. Um, when I started this project, I didn't want to include anything which, well, only things which would have sort of a man-made influence, but didn't really have, like, was such a big event that well, uh, there were so many, um, yeah, how do you call it, that were worse, like so many fatalities. So I left the worst out, but uh, this is the top of the iceberg. It's like uh, quite bad and probably everybody knows that, but when you have to film A to Z, it becomes even cl more clear. So I started with this information and started drawing with a pencil and sort of filling it in, uh, sketching a bit, how would an E look? How could I connect the event of a tanker uh, stranding ashore? Uh, connected to the type of damage, the oil spill, uh, connected perhaps to a different letter, uh, which can be done through the color palette. Um, how could I connect it to the animals, to the, uh, the wildlife, to the location? So you're going to uh, use Google uh, Earth to uh, have a walk through Alaska and uh, go by the, uh, yeah, by the waters, see bit how it looks. Um, investigate how the tanker looked, simplify it a bit. Um, and I did this all in a slightly uh, cartoonish way um, because I wanted to have a nice and interesting contrast. I didn't want to make a realistic uh, portrayal of what had happened because they can watch the videos or the pictures, but I wanted to do something which was at first look a bit um, you thought like, oh, how cute. And then you look closer and you say, oh, actually it, half of it isn't cute or half of it is perhaps uh, calling my attention to something. And that was sort of uh, this divide I was looking for. And this also was in the, um, how I filled it with the subject. Like I wanted to have a part of it to be this human uh, intervention um, or pollution event. And on the other side, the serenity, which was originally, originally there. Um, not all, all letters have this serenity, but most of them have. And because you have to fit both of these worlds in one image, um, it, it fits to make it sort of simplified, to um, make it a bit abstract, make it feel like these children drawings with uh, bold, strong strokes with a really uh, yeah, strong contrast and that it's really sort of outspoken. So then I started drawing and I started factorization because the idea was always there to perhaps have a look at it if I could make it into a sort of typable typeface or perhaps look into um, yeah, just cleaning it up a bit, uh, giving myself more options in how I want to colorize it. Um, you can see I made certain choices in the digitization. Um, I used sort of um, yeah, these uh, expressive things, like there's a dead fish and it has crosses for its eyes, like a bit of the, the mix of cartoonishness and something which yeah, you have to take a bit more serious. And I think this cartoonishness really helps uh, making it connect because otherwise it feels so perhaps too heavy. It becomes too much like reality and we already have to handle reality in the real world. Then it's better to have this sort of reality in uh, sort of simplified, um, strengthened, made a bit bolder in the illustrations. And also a nice mix of um, really detailed drawings and more abstract things. Like you see the, the birds flying. Well, that's as simple as birds you can make, but they still give a feeling to this drawing and a certain vibrancy. The same with the, the water above. Of course, black and white uh, yeah, didn't really uh, work uh, yeah, as, as good as you want to. So you're going to look into color. Well, for color, of course, it's simple. We can go full color with CMYK and all the grades of black and use everything which can be mixed. 
And then you can end up with an illustration which sort of feels like this. Uh, this was one of my earlier digitizations and colorings of it. And it, it was really simple. It was really using flat colors, uh, filled entire areas. And although I thought like, well, this really looks like the place where it is, like a bit Alaska, a bit snowy, a bit, uh, uh, there's still plenty of greenery there. The tanker looks quite real, well, by factor standards, realistic. The animals look realistic by this standard. But I felt if I start to simplify the drawing, so if I use this really bold line drawing, I should make a similar bold decision for the colors. I'm not saying like it's an extremely bold decision, but the, the color should be simple. There's, it shouldn't uh, be too difficult to view what kind of letter it is. Like here, you first look to the green, to the blue, and then you see red and gray. And in the end, you see, oh, it's an E. Well, if you'd use a different method, you can sort of yeah, give it more, uh, make it a bit stronger. This also tied in to the idea of what I wanted to do with them, which was to print them. And well, CMYK prints, well, it's all these colors on top of each other. I thought like, well, can't we use a sort of simplified version, like just two colors, because then you have to use less ink. Um, and also with colors, if you overprint them, you have two colors, but you always get a present which is the third color. And I really like this idea. It's tied into the, the thought of making a sort of ecological friendly printing process for your letter. Although if I must say, if I wanted to print all of them, CMYK would probably be far much efficient. But to use sort of minimal things to have a maximum of impact. And I think that's true for all illustration and all design. Um, it always helps to have something, a, a really sort of bold, strong line work, a bold, strong color palette. And if you have too much, if you can have everything, um, it can work, but sometimes it, it lessens the strength of your visual. So uh, here you can see the result. And yeah, well, actually with the blue and the red, the uh, we can sort of mix this grayish by making the values equal. Um, we still have the red of the tanker of that extremely poisonous paint used at the bottom. And the thing we mostly miss out is the greenery of the trees and at the bottom. But I felt that wasn't uh, that much of a pain. It, it didn't feel like the left drawing was so much uh, more realistic than the right one. Well, the right one, yeah, it, it sort of shows what it is, uh, it, a bit of an Arctic feel. Um, I introduced the Bende dots to get this sort of drawing, illustrative graphic feel um, that you don't have only solid colors because if you only use solid colors, it can become quite uh, hermetic. You can see that in the left uh, drawing, it's really solid and everything is filled. Well, on the right one, hey, you have the space around the letter, but within it, there's, there's also space. It's a bit airy. And of course, um, I didn't stop there. This might feel like a big step, but uh, it didn't happen overnight. Um, I'll do one back. So you saw the previous one, and which I mulled for years. And later on, I thought like, no, we have to redo them because where uh, it didn't feel like a letter enough. If you look at the previous one, yes, it's an E, but the E could be a bit more solid. It could be a bit more like a real E. And most of all, it should work together with all the other letters of the alphabet. And it didn't really work in this, the method I had here. So I, over the years, I reworked them. I adjusted the color palette. I introduced these elements, for instance, with these uh, clouds to sort of mix air and the, the foam of the water and things like that to make it a bit freshy and also uh, give it a bit of this, uh, yeah, this pollution 
feeling, and of course, plenty of oil. So you can see many of the elements which I used in the original one, it's still here. It's all just reined in a little bit, uh, made a bit more expressive. Um, of course, the fish with the crossed air, uh, eyes still there. I absolutely love this because it's the simplest way you can showcase that an animal is dead. Like you can chop them in half, but people will say like, oh no, it's in the water or something, but give them crossed eyes and you'll know, okay, here's something bad which happened. Then of course, I had all my illustrations. I'll show more of them later, but I felt um, there should be more than this. It shouldn't be only the letter because in these alphabet books, you have the letter and the text together with it. And I think that's where the sort of strength, if I can say so myself, of this project comes from, is the combination of the story together with the visual. So of course it has to rhyme. So I rhymed away for all I can, like I'm not, uh, my English is decent, but I'm not native. And uh, I know that my, my rhymes uh, are not uh, praised, but still I did my best. And I think uh, you get this feeling of, you get the letter, you get the story, uh, below it, you get a short copy of the information. And in this way, they strengthen each other. The letter and the copy are one and are only uh, sort of accelerating each other in, well, I won't say sadness, but the impact is way stronger because when you use both of them, of course, they have to rhyme and work together. So next to the E, well, let's have after the E comes the F, which is for fracking in this way. And we make it rhyme. So all throughout the booklet, we make these things rhyme. We add the information about the process. Um, I'm always quite fond of this one that the oil really starts to break from the ground. It's like uh, in the fracking process in which they inject uh, chemicals in the ground and um, they pump it out again in the in to me, this feels like the infographics, which always showcase how the process works. And of course, you have a poor, poor mole at the uh, left bottom who is disturbed and uh, raises to the ground. So you can see over here, there's also this uh, mix between uh, sort of this tranquility and uh, the influence of us as humans. So here we can see them together. Um, we give them a nice color palette. And this is what we use throughout the entire uh, series. And throughout our series, um, we have our A to the Z. You can see here all of them uh, without, uh, well, uh, besides the numbers. Um, originally, I didn't always have these colored backgrounds, but I felt in these children books, the the bold colors in the background always play a really strong part. So I felt they had to be in there. They had really tried to create this area around it. Of course, here we miss this overview, but you can see here that all letters have this, uh, a bit of a similar way, they have a similar height that, and it really helps, same as a real typeface, tie them together. And that's something on which I also worked throughout the yeah, years. Of course, no um, days of type project is ready without some extra illustrations. Um, currently, I'm unsure what I'm going to do with it, but here you have at least my extra illustrations surrounding it, like mixing things which on which uh, we have an everyday impact, like the um, six pack holders, which are actually found around uh, turtles who have grown around it or bags which birds pick up and um, yeah these these sort of people see them could pass by on the social media feed and think oh this is sad and pick up their next six pack and never will wonder about it again so I felt these were like illustrations next to them um, I will now showcase 
a few extra letters. I did them in a different presentation, so that's easier to showcase. Um, yeah, here we go. Um, I hope, oh wait, of course it stopped sharing my screen. I will, there we go. And here. So these illustrations are sort of the introduction illustrations. Artie, we don't see it. Oh, oh, I thought I did it again. Um, you can see the PDF? No, I see Finder. Okay, I will do it again. Zoom is very nice to us today. I will do it again. Okay. Uh, is the PDF now in front? No. Uh, I will I will restart uh, my uh, PDF, uh, my Acrobat. Ah, oh, I see what it did there. Um, yes, here we go. Uh, you hopefully have it now. Mm, not yet, yeah. You have yeah. the full screen? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, Zoom sometimes likes to share different things. Um, so we start from the, uh, I will quickly sort of run through them. We go from um, acid rain to nuclear testing. In the nuclear, uh, I'll highlight some of my favorite elements and perhaps also how I got to them. Um, uh, I really wanted to introduce one of the uh, one of the letters connected to uh, nuclear testing because it has such an e enormous influence on the nature and half of uh, well a few decades later people forget oh was there ever a nuclear test here so uh, at Bikini the French did there on an atoll did their nuclear testing and well people always care oh they put boats there and boats were blasted away well. There was also wildlife there, but people don't seem to, well, many people care, but sadly too many people don't care. So in this one, you can also see the introduction of the sort of sadness destruction. Like you can see that a bird is losing its wing, but it's not that I'm stressing that it's losing its wing. It's like this detail and it doesn't, isn't bloody. It just looks like, ah, oh, that poor bird. Of course, Chernobyl had to be included. Uh, we have over here a two-headed uh, goal, I think. They don't really exist, but sometimes it's good to exaggerate, although they would call out and say, well, we've never seen two-headed goals there, so it didn't happen. Um, of course, sadly, the Deepwater Horizon, which we probably still remember too well, Again, using our fa my favorite cross-eyed uh, 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 cross-air uh, eye fish. Well, we just passed the E and the F. The G is the only one which is actually well, together with perhaps two others, so focused really on uh, human habitat. Here it's for the great smog in London, uh, but I felt it was too good to pass up. It's like such iconic pictures of like an entire city which was just drowning in fog and then you see these landmarks popping out um i felt it was uh yeah it, it was also uh, it, it was also a great wake-up call for the entire industry and for at least uh, england as a country i believe to put in way stricter uh, um, laws for pollution um on the other side, we have our H for the uh, mountain removal uh, mining. Uh, in the past, you just built a mine under the ground. Over here, we'll just chop off the entire top of the mountain and get our ore from there. And uh, this is used a lot for printing ink, for instance. Um, over here, you can also again see very clearly the definition between sort of tranquility and destruction. Uh, Ixtoc 1 is uh, an, an oil spill um, quite close by to where deep, oh, close by, no, totally not close by to where Deepwater Horizon was, but also in the Gulf of Mexico. 
which also had a really big impact on the wildlife there. Jilin uh, uh, was in China, a toxic waste spill. And I always, um, in advance, thought I want to use these illustrations next to each other. So I always chose different color palettes. And all of these are only two colors with the overlay as an added bonus. So I always made sure there was a nice contrast with the letter which was on the, yeah, the Verso uh, page. We have uh, coal slurry spills, uh, which happen way too often and just drag away entire neighborhoods and wildlife. We have the Love Canal, which was a, um, yeah, a small town, a township in the US, which was built on top of a toxic waste uh, site. Um, over here as well, yes, the houses didn't melt, but uh, it, it, it did, like the, the toxicity was oozing up through the ground. So how do you visualize it? And I felt this sort of melting effect of how does these toxic yeah, pollutants are um, eating away at the, the world above uh, was a really fascinating take. Uh, the Mir mine, like well, I think one of the deepest and largest hole, man-made holes in the world. Uh, it's a diamond mine, perfect for the M because you can make it move around the, M, uh, the, yeah, the indent. And of course you have to in introduce a big dump truck. In that one, there isn't a lot of natural tranquility. Um, so I chose to use the diamonds which were once there and now just mined up. Uh, the N is for Nauru, which is an, an, an island. Um, yeah, in the, uh, you know, how do you call it in English? Uh, well, Pacific, I think. Um, and it was totally uh, mined dry. And uh, it's a fascinating story because like back then, it was such a rich island when the mining was happening and like people had expensive cars, expensive hotels. It was aside from large part of the people who lived there, of course, but it was like a bit of a, uh, yeah, it, it felt so weird, but it only li lived, this, this sort of fake world only lived on the strip mining. And when it was done, the, everything collapsed and, uh, people didn't even bother to do a cleanup. So uh, everywhere there's skeletons of mining rigs and things which loaded it to ships and the shipwrecks are still on the shore. And it's all was all for phosphate, um, which, yeah. Uh, so it's like this throwaway island, which still happens nowadays. Like, uh, oh, we don't care if the sea level is rising. Um, yeah, it, it, you run into these really um, nasty tales. Um, interesting one is Osborne Reef. People thought like, oh, well, let's make a fake reef. Um, and just, we have the, all these uh, extra tires. We don't know what to do with them. Let's just dump them somewhere, but we can make a fake reef out of it and perhaps fish will live there. Well, it turned out to be a big cause of, um, you know, yeah, well, both plastic pollution, but also in microplastics. And only now, uh, I think for the past 10 years, they've been trying to clean it up because it wasn't such a good idea. Well, um, who knew? Um, P is for Prudho Bay, which is connected to the Exxon Valdez because Prudho Bay oil field was connected to the uh, Exxon Valdez uh, disaster because the ship was taking oil from there. Uh, they stopped. Uh, expanding it a while ago but uh, then uh, i believe during trump they said like well let's go my uh, open further areas again i think it's now uh well closed up again but they say like oh well let's open up half of alaska for oil drilling it's uh, yeah and and half uh, half of the time things are leaking so entire areas are just spilling with excess oil um, queensland in in uh, Australia, also had a good uh, uh, yeah, spill of ship losing containers with, I believe, uh, aluminium fossils, like, uh, yeah, something which you can't eat. 
uh, Red Mud is also one of the worst ones. And uh, in that one, I really love the, the Fox. It's one of my favorites. Um, so yeah, we, we have the S, Seveso, which was a toxicity disaster. Uh, fascinating of this one was that they, they killed like uh, tens of thousands of animals just in advance to stop it from getting into the food chain um, just because of a well, by side, extremely large leak in uh, uh, of uh, toxins. Well, on, on Tar Creek, we have another town built upon toxic things. Uranium mining, well, it has been going strong since I believe I have the date, well, since a long time. And well, what do you do with the waste? I don't know. Valley of the Drums is also an area built, filled with um, yeah, barrels, which are just rotting and rusting away. Um, mines of the wheel chain here, which have been opened and closed. And in each of them, I try to instill this story of what happened there uh, why, what was the wildlife and um, well, um, in the beginning, I perhaps wanted to introduce a future, like what will happen afterwards, but I felt it was too much. Uh, so I chose for a sort of past present uh, balance. So in, in China, then we have the Yangtze Dam, which uh, rerouted uh, like enormous amount of rivers water, which caused areas to just dry up and animals to die out and zinc mining which is still going on so you can see all of them have these contrast between color contrast between shape and sometimes also a contrast in what they want to tell that there's something which happened to, due to mining some things which happened due to a human mistake um, all these kind of things and i try to give attention to each of them because all these disasters, they happen sometimes because of really tiny mistakes and they have such large repercussions that you want to sort of uh, yeah, expand upon them. So that was the A to the Z. I think uh, it would be ni uh, nice, perhaps if you, uh, I can show a, a time lapse or we can perhaps go into the questions. Um, yeah, le let's go into the questions. That would be a good idea. Yeah. So I, I will start with a question. How did you pick the colors? Because did you use the photos as inspiration because they are, they, are, they are bright, but they are also like a little bit of pastel kind of yeah. feeling? Quite often I picked one color in advance, which I really think caught the main subject. Mm -hmm. Like uh, for instance, in the one with the uh, uh, toxic barrel, uh, the toxic things in barrels. Mm -hmm. In the photographs, which I saw of the site, there was these really vibrant yellow barrels. So I always knew, okay, one of the main colors has to be yellow. And for the other one uh, color, you try to find something, a mix, which only which strengthens the overlay effect. So which expands your color palette um, a little bit to uh, maximizing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same with something which is extremely water heavy. Uh, you always pick a blue. You try to find a blue which contrasts nicely with the secondary color, which is sometimes a bit of a red or a purplish. And you try to yeah, expand upon them. And yeah, in some of them, it was also a feeling like the one for the bee with the bikini apple. Um, I really wanted to cut this feeling of this explosion so i used extremely yeah this reddish yellow color of mm. uh, nuclear fire almost. and there was water in this picture but i felt this uh, conveyed the the event more yeah can you stop sharing your screen please yeah, yeah i will okay there you are thank you arthur for your presentation i really uh, enjoyed it and i think uh, you inspire a lot of people with the letters that that you have made and illustrations and the whole alphabet there are still three or four numbers to come yep. so i'm keeping my eye on instagram for that i want to thank all the people who attended the event for coming and spending the time uh, with us have a great day and arthur thank you again for making this great work and sharing your um, journey thank you during thank the, the last years thank you Okay, bye-bye, everybody.